I've always been curious about how many of my favorite comics actually got into the hands of readers, but I didn't realize until recently that all that information was printed in the books. Hi, I'm Darren. These are my hands, and today I've got all of the statements of publication from Gru the Wanderer, and I've deciphered all the numbers so that I can answer my question. And I've even got some perspective from our friend Mark Evanier. So the short answer is, the number of comics that made it into readers' hands was consistently about 100,000 during the Marvel epic run of Gru. So let's take a look at how I got to that number and why Mark says that may not be the whole story. So I'm going to grab issue number 38 just to show you what's going on in here, only because it's slightly easier to read than the statement in issue number 26. So, if we look at the back of the comic book, in the letters section, in the Grugrams, oh, look at Gru, I love him. Okay, don't be distracted. Once a year, Marvel would publish its Statement of Ownership, Management, and Circulation, as required by something in the government of the United States. I think it was so that they could get cheaper postal rates when they were mailing out their subscriptions. Anyway, there's lots of neat information in here. And before we dive into it, I'm just going to go over the terms. I'm going to go over the things that it's reporting. First of all, we've got the title of the publication. That's Sergio Aragonez, Grew the Wanderer. Nice and easy. And it's also got a publication number. Okay, this is a bad example because they actually forgot to put the date of filing in. Um, instead, they put the publication number there. And that is an indication to me about how seriously they took this information. Perhaps not quite as seriously as they should. Anyway, we should have the publication number. And then the next line, number two, is the date of filing. Every year they would file this on a particular date. Usually it was like the beginning of October, although once I think it was the beginning of November. Point number three is the frequency of the issue. How often does the comic come out? In the case of Gru, monthly. And they also include under point number three, the number of issues a year, 12, and subscription prices. Number four, we've got the mailing addresses of the Office of Publication. That's Marvel in New York City. Number five, the address of the headquarters of the general business offices. Ooh, this is exciting stuff. Again, that New York address. And then number six, the full names and complete addresses of the publisher. In this case, it's Stan Lee. The editor, uh, I think it's, at least it started out being Archie Goodwin and managing editor, Joe Duffy, at least in the early years. It's at this point that we get to what I think is the interesting stuff. Number seven lists the owner. Owner of what? Presumably the owner of the title. Well, this is Sergio Aragonez Grew the Wanderer, so we would expect it to be Sergio Aragonez, right? We'll get to that. Next, we have known bondholders, mortgages, and other security holders. Ooh, exciting. You know, does anybody else have their finger in the pie? And then under section number nine, this is uh, for nonprofit organizations. They have to fill out stuff. You know, comic books is not a nonprofit enterprise, so they always left that blank. And then we get to section number 10. This is the extent and nature of circulation. These are the numbers that we want to look at to find out how many people were buying GRU and presumably reading it every month. Section 10 is separated into A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. A, B, C, D. Seven sections. And each of those sections is also divided into other sections. So lots of numbers to look at here, but it actually is pretty easy to decipher once you know what you're looking for. In section A, we've got the total number of copies printed for each issue or each month. With a lot of these sections, you're going to get the average for the year. So this is like your monthly average. And then you're also going to have an actual number for the issue nearest the date of publication. Over the year, we averaged 100,000 copies, but on the issue closest to the date of publication, October the 1st, whatever year it is, we actually published 
99,872, something like that. But the number of copies of the issue that came off the printing press is what we're finding out in 10A. 10B tells us what the paid circulation is. So of the copies of the comic book that were printed, how many got bought? So that's separated into two sections as well. There's paid circulation that went out through dealers, carriers, street vendors, and counter sales. Basically, if it's shown up at your supermarket, at your bookstore, at your corner store, at your comic book shop, that's the paid circulation through dealers. And then the second section is mail subscriptions. So if you have a subscription to Guru the Wanderer, it's coming to you through the mail. That's included there as well. 10C is the total paid circulation. So what that's doing is it's taking the paid circulation through the dealers, adding the mail subscriptions, and that's getting your total paid circulation. Everybody who's paying for the comic, how many comics that is, that's your total paid circulation. That's actually the number that I'm kind of most interested in. But there are other interesting numbers. For example, in 10D, we have the free distribution numbers. That's how many samples, complimentary copies, etc. go out. So, you know, if you show up to the Marvel office and say, oh, I'm such a fan of Gru the Wanderer, maybe they'll hand you a free comic. I don't know if that's how it worked. Section E, total distribution. So this is the total distributed comics, the comics that were paid for and the comics that were given away for free. So this number is going to be a little bit higher than the total paid circulation. It really isn't that much. It might be a couple to a few hundred issues. Maybe that's what you're interested in because that's comics in hand. I think I'm more interested in the total paid circulation. But again, it's not going to be that much of a difference. Then we get section F, copies not distributed. And that's broken down into two sections, office use, which includes leftovers and spoiled things, basically comics that never went out of the office. And then we have returns from news agents. That's the second section. So these are comics that did go out, but then got returned. Now, we could go into a big discussion about direct editions. See, here's a direct edition versus market editions and the symbols in the corners down here and what that means. But for our purposes right now, sometimes a comic gets put on the shelf and it doesn't sell and the vendor is able to return it and get their money back. So that is returns from news agents. Now, fortunately, we don't have to subtract that from the total paid circulation. That's already kind of taken into account. When we look at section G, we have the total sum of E and F. So we've got the total distribution plus the copies not distributed. We add those up together, and that should equal what we have in 10A, the total number of copies printed. And if the person here is doing their job right, it's going to add up. Number 11, we have the certifying signature of the person who was in charge of putting these numbers together. That's the statement of ownership, management, and circulation. And we're going to take a look at all of the ones that we've got for Grew the Wanderer in the Marvel Epic run. And we're going to pay most close attention to the total paid circulation because that's what's most interesting to me. That's the question I want to answer. But there are other interesting tidbits that we'll glean from this as well. Oh, you don't like when I do that. I don't like when I do that either. So you might notice that I don't have 10 comics here. I've only got nine, but Gru was published for 10 years, you say. However, in order to get your first year's worth of stats out, you've got to go through a year. So in 1987, we've got stats for the first year. In the third year, we've got the stats for the second year. In the fourth year, we've got the stats for the third year continuing until 1994, the 10th year of publication, where we've got stats for the ninth year. And because Gru wasn't published for an 11th year, we don't have any numbers for the 10th year. Does that make sense? I hope so. Gru the Wanderer, issue number 26 from April 1987. What do we got here? We got Karate Martial Arts Catalog featuring Chuck Norris with free autographed photo. Wow. All right, here we've got it. The first statement of ownership, published in 1987 for 1986. 
So maybe I'll blow it up and put it on the side here and we can go through it together. The title of the publication is Sergio Aragonez, Grew the Wanderer, and it's got a publication number and it's got a data filing October the, what, 6th, 1986. Frequency of the publication is monthly. There's 12 of them a year and it's $9 to have a mail subscription for this comic book in 1986. That's fantastic. In Canada, it's only 11 bucks. I would gladly pay $11 to have 12 issues of Grew the Wanderer mailed to my house. I can't even get a comic mailed to me, a single comic mailed to me for $11 these days. Never mind pay for the comic. Great deal. We've got the names and addresses of the publisher and the managing editors and the editors, but what is interesting to me here, of course, is number seven, the owner, Sergio Aragonez, P.O. Box, whatever it is, in Ouija, Ouija, uh, I can't pronounce it, Ojea, oh, you're so Canadian, Oya, <laughs> I don't know how to say it, uh, Sergio's P.O. Box in California. So Sergio Aragonez is the owner of Sergio Aragonez Grew the Wanderer. Why did I take my hand out of there? No known bond holders and no nonprofit stuff. So let's get to the numbers. 10A, the average number of copies printed for Grew the Wanderer in 1986 was 235,902 copies. That's almost a quarter of a million copies of Grew comics printed every month. And that's a big surprise. That's a big number to me. They don't all get sold. Looking at 10B, the paid circulation is 108,042 comics. Add to that the mail subscription average of 1,633, although by the end of the year they were up to 2,500 copies going out via mail subscription. And you've got your total paid circulation in 10C of 109,675 copies of Grew the Wanderer being paid for every month in 1986. How does that compare to some of Marvel's other comics? Well, I wasn't able to find anything that matched this exact year, but I did find Web of Spider-Man and the, what is it, the Uncanny X-Men from around the same era. Now, I would expect that both of those comics would be selling higher numbers than Gru. Marvel Comics is a superhero-focused comic book publisher, so your superheroes are going to do great, right? Web of Spider-Man, everyone loves Spider-Man. X-Men was the biggest thing going on, in my recollection anyway, for comics at the time. How does Gru compare? Web of Spider-Man was printing about 341,000 copies per issue. That's not even double what they're printing for Gru. So that makes Gru look pretty good in my eyes. And the average paid circulation, total paid circulation... 192,800. Gru is doing great compared with a massive seller like Spider-Man. Gru's doing more than half the numbers that Spider-Man is doing. I think that that stacks up really well. What about those uncanny X-Men? Potentially the biggest comic seller at the time. Taking a look at the stats that I could find for 1988, X-Men's total paid circulation was 432,745. Okay, that's a lot more. That's like four and a bit times more than Gru. But come on, Gru the Wanderer versus the Uncanny X-Men putting up numbers like that? I think Gru was doing great. If we're curious about like the free distribution and stuff, in 1986, 225 issues were given away for free on average a month. 1,743 copies didn't make it out of the office, and 124,259 were returned from the newsagents. Sounds like a big number, but man alive, they were printing almost a quarter of a million copies 
of course you're going to have that many returns when you're selling about 110,000 issues. And down at the bottom, Thomas Costello is signing this. He's the business manager. All right. That took a while to go through. We're going to take a look at the other ones. I'm going to point out the total paid circulation and anything else that's particularly interesting. All right. Grew number 38 from April 1988. This is going to be the numbers for 1987. Oh, I just want to read the comic. Look at Referto there. Okay. Here's the numbers. First thing I got to point out, Sergio Aragonese's. They stuck an extra apostrophe S thing at the end of Sergio's name. Again, showing us how much they care about the accuracy of this report. Subscription price has gone up a little bit. Our total paid circulation is down a little bit, down about 1,500 to 108,158 issues. So it's dropping a little bit. Mail subscriptions are up over 1,000 this year. So that's kind of neat. And of course, I mentioned that they missed actually giving the date of filing. All right. 1989, grew number 51. This is for, oh, look at that happy puppy. This is for 1988's numbers. Oh, I want to read the comic instead. Chacal. But we're here for the numbers, so let's take a look. This is the year that subscriptions reached their highest point at 3,600 copies being mailed out to GRU readers every month. Total paid circulation has dropped again this year to 96,205. That's not because GRU is doing particularly bad. That's because that's just what the comics industry is doing at the end of the 80s into the 90s. People are buying less comics. I didn't mention it last time, but this is the second year that Janet Pazzullo is signing this statement. Oh, and while we're at it, number seven, Sergio is still listed as the owner. Why do I point that out? Because it's going to change. Issue number 65 from May of 1990. These are the 1989 numbers. First thing that I want to point out is the Canadian subscription price has gone up to $17. Well, you know, I'd still take it. And we've got a foreign subscription rate. So our friends in Europe can have GRU mail to them for $24 a year. Let's take a look at number seven. Under the owner, we've got the Andrews Group, or McAndrews and Forbes Holding Incorporated. Why isn't Sergio listed there anymore? I am not sure what that means. I don't know what it means when Referto has a gray head either. What about the bondholders? It used to be none. Now the bond register is held by an indentured trustee. I guess that's McAndrews and Forbes Holding? It's different. I'm mostly concerned with looking at the numbers. Total paid circulation, we're down at 90,830. So again, another drop from last year. That's just the way the market is going. Oh, and for what it's worth, this year, it was filed on my birthday. Now we're looking at 1991. Have I got things out of order? I do. This is what we're looking at here. Issue number 75. Wouldn't you rather be looking at these funny drawings? What a great comic. He's upside down. He's a happy dog. Oh, I love it. It's great. Who owns Sergio Aragonese's Grew the Wanderer this year? It's still McAndrews and... What is it? Forbes Holding Incorporated. Do we have a bondholder this year? We do. Ronald O. Perlman. Under 10C, the paid circulation, the total paid circulation, 88,888. That would be awesome, but it's not. It's... 883. So again, dropping about 2,000 from last year. And the publication number is different this year, which is strange. Maybe that has to do with the care that they take in making sure they get the numbers right. Now we've got issue number 87. These are the numbers for 1991. And you'll notice Referto comic on the back, right? That's the first time we're seeing that. You probably noticed little Sergio comic at the beginning. At this point, the comic has increased in price $1.25 over the previous year. And what's going on with the 
statement of ownership? Well, we've got the name right again. Now it's back to Sergio Aragonés grew the Wanderer with no superfluous apostrophe S's. Subscription rates have gone up again to $15 and $23 for American and Canadian subscribers. Sorry, foreign subscribers, there's no option for you anymore. Who owns Sergio Aragonés grew the Wanderer this year? Taking a look down at number seven, we've got Marvel Entertainment Group. None under known bondholders. Hi, this is Darren from the future interrupting for a moment. I think I've got a bit of a handle on what's going on here with the owners. This year we see that Marvel Entertainment Group is the owner and that Marvel Entertainment Group is partially owned by McAndrews and Forbes Holding. So what I think is, this is not saying that Marvel or McAndrews owns Sergio Aragonés Grew the Wanderer, the comic. What I think it's saying is that Marvel Entertainment Group, McAndrews and Forbes, maybe even Ron O. Perlman, are the owners of the publishing company that publishes Sergio Aragonés Grew the Wanderer. At least that's what I'm thinking right now. The rest of this video is going to have me in my regular confused state. Please excuse me for that. Thanks a lot. Back to the video. Total paid subscription is each month. We're down to 69,525 issues every month. If you've been looking at the non-distributed numbers over the last few years, you'll notice that this year is a steep drop. We're at 1,000, 750, 950, 600 for a couple of years. This year, the office average is down to 250 not distributed. For what it's worth, the returns from newsstands has really been dropping over the years too, which means they've been really dialing in the number of print copies to the number of copies that they've been selling of Grew the Wanderer. So I guess that's a good thing. But the last thing I will point out is that the publication number has changed again. It's very close to, but not the same as what it was in earlier years. Issue number 99, refer to on the back. Gods on the front, Sergio and Mark on the inside front cover with Tom and Stan. The back is a puzzle page. We've got a little Gru comic. And here's our statement. This is the year that Gru the Wander has gone to direct editions as opposed to, I think they're called market editions. So basically that means they're no longer printing hundreds of thousands of copies, sending them to the grocery stores, hoping people will buy them in the checkout line, and then getting tens, maybe hundreds of thousands sent back. They're printing for the demand that the comic book shops have. They're selling to the comic book shops. And we're seeing, at the end of the year at least, no comics being returned. Subscription price has gone up again for the folks in the States to $27 a year. Still a bargain. Marvel still owns... Sergio Aragonés grew the Wanderer, according to this box, but the average copies printed of the comic each month has dropped. It's been dropping year after year after year. Last year, they were printing on average 130-ish thousand copies per month. Less than half of that is being printed this year on average at 65,473. The number of subscriptions has actually gone up a little bit from last year. It's still at 3,100. The total paid circulation is 47,165. They're giving away a lot more free copies. They're back up to 250. That's actually the highest number of free copies that were going out on average. And what we see at the end of the year at the issue closest to the date of filing, there were zero news returns. The number of news returns has dropped down to 17,500 on average, but by the end of the year, none of those were being returned because it's gone to a direct edition. And here we come to issue 109, the last time that we get a statement of ownership management and circulation. Not a whole lot has changed. You can't get a subscription in Canada anymore. Marvel is still the owner. The number of copies printed is down to 35,000 per issue. That's almost halved again, so almost a quarter of the number than was being printed just two years ago. Subscription numbers have dropped down to 1,600, and the total paid circulation is at 34,277. 
That's not an indication of the popularity of Gru the Wanderer. That's an indication of what is happening in the entire comics scene through the early 90s, and it, and it will continue on. Now, our friend Mark Evanier, part of the Gru crew, when I reached out to him to ask him how to understand what the terms in these boxes were, his main reply to me was, be wary of those numbers. Let me read to you what Mark wrote to me. Mark writes, well, that says around 90,000 copies of each issue, but there's some question as to the accuracy of these statements of ownership stats. People in the industry who deal with these things have told me they were always wildly inaccurate. Dick Giordano, who was at the point the editor-in-chief at Charlton Comics, said that at his company, someone just made up numbers and plugged them in. Many historian-type folks, though, insist they're accurate, or they say something like, well, they may not be accurate, but they're all we have, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, so I don't put a lot of stock in them. So, it's good to know what Mark has to say about the accuracy of the numbers. I guess I am one of those historian types who says, yeah, this is all that we've got. How else can we know the answer to the questions of, how many people were reading Gru? When you compare the numbers that we're getting for Gru against Spider-Man, against the X-Men, at the very least, we can know relatively how well Gru did compared to those massive, huge comics, the big money makers for Marvel. I think Sergio, Mark, Tom, Stan, they should all be proud of the work they did. I think it's great to know that Gru the Wanderer stood up so well against those other giants. Gru was a huge success, even if you don't really trust the numbers. Circulation numbers aren't the only inside peaks we get at the comic book business. Watch this video next for more on how our favorite Gru comics were made. Please be sure that you're subscribed and have notifications turned on. And if your lovely dog Referto has a gray head on the Grugrams page, the algorithm thinks you'll want to watch this video next. Take care, everyone.